Praise Lord. Let us pray. Loving Father, we thank you for this time, Lord. Even now we are going to read your heavenly words yet again. Help us and help us to read it properly and help us to understand each and every word that we read. Talk to us through your scriptures as you spoke to Moses on those days. Be with us and guide us. In the name of Jesus I ask. Amen. Now let us read the book of Numbers from chapter 23. And Balaam said unto Balak, Build me here seven altars, and prepare me here seven oxen and seven rams. And Balak did as Balaam had spoken, and Balak and Balaam offered an every altar a bullock and a ram. And Balaam said unto Balak, Stand by thy burnt offering, and I will go. Perhaps the Lord will come to meet me, and whatsoever he showeth me, I will tell thee. And he went to an high place. And God met Balaam, and he said unto him, I have prepared seven altars, and I have offered upon every altar a bullock and a ram. And the Lord put a word in Balaam's mouth, and said, Written unto Balak, and thus thou shalt speak. And he returned unto him, and lo, he stood by his burnt offering, he and all the princes of Moab. And he took up his parable, and said, Balak, the king of Moab hath brought me from Aram out of the mountains of the east, saying, Come, curse for me, Jacob, and come, defy Israel. How shall I curse whom God hath not cursed? Or how shall I defy whom the Lord hath not defied? For from the top of the rocks I see him, and from the hills I behold him low. The people shall dwell alone, and shall not be reckoned among the nations. Who can count the dust of Jacob? And the number of the fourth part of Israel, let me die the death of the righteous, and at my last end be like his. And Balak said unto Balaam, What hast thou done unto me? I took thee to curse mine enemies, and behold, thou hast blessed them altogether. And he answered and said, Must I not take heed to speak that which the Lord had put in my mouth? And Balak said unto him, Come, I pray thee, with me unto another place. From where thou mayest see them, thou shalt see but the utmost part of them, and shalt not see them all, and curse them for me from there. And he brought him into the field of Zophim, to the top of Pisgah, and built seven altars, and offered a bullock and a ram on every altar. And he said unto Balak, Stand here by the burnt offering, while I meet the Lord yonder. And the Lord met Balaam, and put a word in his mouth, and said, Go again unto Balak, and say thus. And when he came to him, behold, he stood by his burnt offering, and the princess of Moab with him. And Balak said unto him, What had the Lord spoken? And he took up his parable, and said, Rise up, Balak, and hear. Hearken unto me, the son of Zephor. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or had he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he had blessed, and I cannot reverse it. He had not beheld iniquity in Jacob, neither had he seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord his God is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. God brought them out of Egypt. He had, as it were, the strength of a wild ox. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob. Neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, What hath God brought? Behold, the people shall rise up as a great lion, and lift up himself as a young lion. He shall not lie down, until he eat of their prey, and drink the blood of the slain. And Balak said unto Balaam, Neither curse them at all, nor bless them at all. But Balaam answered and said unto Balak, to not I thee, saying all that the Lord speaketh, that I must do? And Balak said unto Balaam, Come, I pray thee, I will bring thee unto another place. Perhaps it will please God that thou mayest curse them for me from there. And Balak brought Balaam unto the top of Peor, that looketh toward Jeshimon. And Balaam said unto Balak, Build me here seven altars. And prepare me here seven bullocks and seven rams. And Balak did a, and Balak did as Balaam had said, and offered a bullock and a ram on every altar. Amen. Now let us read the Acts of the Apostles from chapter two. 
And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven like a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto him cloven tongues as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together, and were confounded, because every man had heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these who speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and in Cappadocia, in Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and familiar in Egypt, and in parts of Libya about Cyrene, and sojourners of Rome, both Jews and proselytes. Cretans and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed, and were perplexed, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunk, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day, but this is that which was spoken to the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, said God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire, and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before that great and notable day of the Lord God come. And it shall come to pass, that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourself also know. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up having loosed the pains of the dead, because it was not possible that he should be held by it. For David speaketh concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, my flesh also shall rest in hope, because thou wilt not leave my soul in hate, neither wilt thou allow thine Holy One to see corruption. Thou hast made him known, thou hast made known to me the ways of life, thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulchre is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He, seeing this before, spoke of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hate, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus had God raised up, whereof we all are witness. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he hath shed forth this, which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he said himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made the same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart, and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? 
Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about three thousand souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs and were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together, and had all things common and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men, as every man had need. And they, continuing daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their food with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God, and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Now let us continue reading Proverbs from chapter 12. Whoso loveth instruction, loveth knowledge, but he that hated reproof is stupid. A good man obtaineth favor of the Lord, but a man of wicked devices will he condemn. A man shall not be established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous shall not be moved. A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband, but she that maketh ashamed is as rottenness in his bones. The thoughts of the righteous are right, but the counsels of the wicked are deceit. The words of the wicked are to lie in wait for blood, but the mouth of the upright shall deliver them. The wicked are overthrown and are not, but the house of the righteous shall stand. A man shall be commended according to his wisdom, but he that is of a perverse heart shall be despised. He that is despised and hath a servant is better than he that honoreth himself and lacketh bread. A righteous man regardeth the life of his beast, but the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. He that tilleth his land shall be satisfied with bread, but he that followeth vain persons is void of understanding. The wicked desireth the net of evil men, but the root of the righteous yieldeth fruit. The wicked is snared by the transgression of his lips, but the just shall come out of trouble. A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth, and the recompense of a man's hand shall be rendered unto him. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkened unto counsel is wise. A fool's wrath is presently known, but a prudent man covereth shame. He that speaketh truth showeth forth righteousness, but a false witness deceit. There is he that speaketh like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is held. The lip of truth shall be established forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. Deceit is in the heart of those who imagine evil, but the counsellors of peace is joy. There shall no evil happen to the just, but the wicked shall be filled with mischief. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but they that deal truly are his delight. A prudent man concealeth knowledge, but the heart of fools proclaimeth foolishness. The land of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be put to forced labour. Heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop. But the good word maketh it glad. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, but the way of the wicked seduceth them. The slothful man roasted not that which he took in hunting, but the substance of a diligent man is precious. In the way of righteousness is life, and in the pathway thereof there is no death. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for even now you helped us to read your words. We thank you for through your scriptures you spoke to us many promises and many words. As we read, Lord, the way of righteousness contains life and not death. So let us also adapt the way of righteousness and walk according to your words. Be with us and protect us. In the name of Jesus, I ask. Amen. God bless you.